What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica, and you are watching a part of the Interview with a Life Coach podcast series. Today, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Justin Keller. He is a graduate of the Jay Shetty Life Coaching Certification Program. Justin, thank you for coming on with us today. Oh, thank you. I'm honored to be here. Oh, we're honored to it's have a good you. day. It is a good day. I understand you are a executive life coach. Is that correct? Is yeah, I I do some business executive coaching and I do some executive entrepreneurial coaching. And it's really for people that are probably have experienced some success and some failure. And it's kind of like what's next i feel a little rocky i think i know what i'm doing but maybe you can help me those are very common questions i get and that's in the executive coaching space you help people to grow their businesses or to decide what it is that they want to do in terms of a career yeah, more the latter. Go-to-market brand building is the slick way to say my niche. Finding something, making it unique, making it special, building it out, getting it ready. It'll never be perfect, but showing it to the world and doing it and being ready to show it to your audience and connect those dots and take it to market. Take it out into the world. I love that. So you said a lot of what you do is working with startups and new entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to go that route? Sure. The last 15 or 20 years ago or so, I guess I'm aging myself, but I started working in corporate fashion in New York and I survived the recession and climbed the corporate ladder and did good and got good jobs and built a you know nice rapport around trust and building brands and selling products and showcasing collections. And I just started becoming that guy that would people would say, hey, I want to launch a brand. I want to hire you or I want to launch a brand and maybe you could help me with all your energy and momentum. Just get it started and you know take it to the masses, to the audience. I need some help. And I actually got hired by a pretty big firm in New York to launch brands. And I did well. And that allowed me to take the leap to open my own business in 2015. And I'm grateful for building trust and doing things honestly in my own way for all the time leading up to then. So then I could garner some trust and rapport with designers to sign them to contracts to work with me and I just started building this business of getting designers ready to enter the U.S. market and positioning and doing trainings and educations and working with teams. And um, it grew pretty fast. And like most people, when lockdown hit, life got flipped upside down. Most of my revenue stream was built on commission for shipped goods. So I had to let myself get evicted of two different offices and fire my seven person staff over the phone, which was hell. But it made me then take a moment to look back on what I really liked or what I was actually good at throughout that quick, fast growing, scaling process. And I realized mentoring young creative designers was a special skill set I had. And I don't know if it's comboed with, I used to be a teacher. I don't know if it's comboed with, I just like to get along with people and create a space where people feel comfortable, but it worked. And so post pandemic, I just started trying to get consulting or contract jobs with brands that would just, I'd help with their sales, help tell the story, help get it clear, help be concise with their mission, what they're trying to offer. And one of the brands I was working with had a life coach and started to learn about this life coaching thing. Someone else simultaneously says to me, Hey, I think you'd be a good life coach. 
And a person I was working with at the time, I had a contract with them where I was a business advisor, but most of the advice was almost being like a voice of reason to help himself make a choice, stand by it, double down and like feel okay with your choice you're making. It essentially was advising and coaching at the same time. And I thought, ding, ding, ding. I want to grow my career portfolio. I want to work with people that are not in the fashion industry per se. I want to keep working with just upstarted creative talents. And it was a double whammy of like reading the Rick Rubin Creative Act book and seeing the Jay Shetty class and signing up and really just taking a leap to work with entrepreneurs going through career shifts and dealing with all the things in life that center around career change or career trajectory or failure or success or moving or buying a house or having a family or having children. It's all really just wrapped into one. And uh, that leads me to where I am now of most of my coaching is around not day one, here's the 25 step process that you're going to do. It's day one, bring a blank piece of paper because we're going to work to create this no rules, only my rules handbook that the only person that needs to feel good about this is yourself. And it's not for everyone, but it works for some people. And it's how I live my own life after working with a coach. And uh, that's where I am today. I love that. What you just said just brought to mind two questions. And I'm sorry mm -hmm. I've been asked these back Apology to back. accepted. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that you do a bit of advising alongside coaching. So would you say that your style of coaching also involves mentoring? And then what are some of the, the second question, what are some of the pain points that you've noticed in your clients that you help them to navigate through as Mm. The first one, yes. I think that the modality or choice word I would say is more of an advisor, but it is like a mentor because I have a lot of learned experiences in the men's, women's luxury goods market in the United States. I do have the ability to help steer and guide through my own experiences, knowing what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. Again, not telling someone what to do, but being honest with things I've gone through and witnessed. I think that as an advisor or mentor helps just gain empathy and trust also. And then your second question, again, was regards to coaching. Yes. What are some of the pain points that pain points. your clients have? as new entrepreneurs that you help yeah. them to navigate through? Number one, macro level. I have this thing I want to do and I don't know what other people are going to think. That just encapsulates a lot of fear of starting something on your own. Like, what are you afraid of? And a lot of people are afraid of a couple things. Fear of failure, judgment of others, and just doing something different. So that first one, fear of failure. Well, fear is normal. And if you're afraid to fail, the only person that will decide if you fail is yourself. And if people are afraid of failure, I try to take a step back and work with that person on just overcoming confidence. A great starting point for that fear is trying something new that is super low stakes. If you fail at it, it probably won't matter. But if you do it well, it'll get this little like garner of self-confidence of, hey, I tried out this and I was okay at it. Huh, that felt good. Do it again. And building towards the confidence level of whatever is this creation you're making and creating and waiting to release, getting to that point of being like, this will never be perfect, but it's good enough and I'm going to release it. The other one is judgment, judgment of others. If someone's creating something that is not like a life or death 
commodity, food, water, or shelter, you're creating something that no one needs to live. Accept that because you're creating something that's a value, something that's going to elicit an emotion, get people wanting to hear more. If you believe in yourself, who cares what other people think? Like, if you're okay with it, it won't matter to what everyone else says because it's yours. Who is someone else to tell this person, this is right or this is wrong? Those are perspectives. My third was doing something different does not mean it's difficult. Trying something different is unique. Trying something different is extraordinary. It's just really about the words that you use to convince yourself or oneself to do something in a unique way and go about that journey and trust that again, you're making something that people don't need for survival. Not everyone's going to like it, but that's okay because the more you can be everything perfect to someone and not try and be something for everyone, which is impossible other than food, water, and shelter, you'll probably have some sort of emotional success. And at that point, you've got to double down. I love it. If it's important to you and it's something that you're passionate about, to remind people that it's about perspective. Yep. So everyone... If it's not important to you, don't do it. Yes. Right. <laughs> We're wasting time. Yeah. And doing things because other people told you to do it, and even if you're good at it, is down the path of the false self. And the true self or the honest self or the authentic self does things because the person and the individual inside knows, I am good enough at this. Sounds easy to get to, but it's not easy to get to. Yeah. Sometimes we have something that we're passionate about, but we might not be confident in the thing because we just don't have enough experience with it yet. Sure. And humans love validation, myself included. And so self-validation is really important. If you're doing what you're doing because you love it and because you're being true to yourself and as opposed to doing something because... Other people want you to. I'm sure that takes a toll on someone's self-confidence. Yes. I consider myself a unique and extraordinary life coach. I am on my way to every day being a better and better life coach. I don't have someone that I turn to and say, hey, am I a good coach? No. No. I turn to myself and all the work I put into this and all the reflections I do to be a better coach. I am my own judgment of my own success. I love that, giving yourself that power and empowering your clients to give themselves that power instead of yes. giving it to someone else to validate them. Yeah. So if that you answered my next question, which was what makes your style of coaching unique? Oh, um, I would say that my style of coaching is unique because people tell me that I'm very calm and I guess it just comes natural to me to be calm and create a calm energy and that grounds someone that is feeling anxiety and anxious. Uh, I also have taken classes in speaking and being on camera and engaging on a screen, which is a modern way of doing life coaching. And I think I've gotten pretty good at being able to connect with somebody digitally. And my whole life as an adult professional, that checks into what would be my top line leader on my resume. What are you good at? I am able to make people come into a space and feel comfortable and just take a home oh, and just, it might be unload their thoughts, 
It might be ask for help. It might be telling me about what they're going through. But I have this ability that I call my superpower to get people to step into this space and just feel comfortable to build rapport and build trust. That's huge. It's so important too, because um, especially when you're working with people that are looking at starting their own business and being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, a lot of that comes with stress mm -hmm. for a lot of people yep. because it's unknown. Yep. But the unknown can be exciting. And a lot of stress for a new entrepreneur or a new small business owner or, or someone creating something that is theirs is actually fear of the known. Fear of like, oh, I know people that tried this and failed. But a different way to say that is, I don't know if I'm going to fail or succeed so why would I not believe in myself with an abundant mindset to say that I might succeed? Build off of that. There's back to the perspective again, right? Because you could say, well, what if this doesn't work out? But then on the other hand, what if I never know because I never tried? Yeah. And then what if I try and it does work yeah. out? And people are their own biggest critics. So the fear around what if it doesn't work, if it's actually just done, there's a good chance it's going to be better than what others expected. It doesn't have to be the final. It doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be the, like, you know, the destination. It's just part of your journey. But it's that first foot out the door, looking around. The world didn't blow up. And then... Stay in your lane and build off of what makes your doing and your being and what you're creating, and what you're making and what your work is unique to yourself. The journey becomes a part of the reward, the process. Yeah, the process. And sometimes when people get nervous or stressed around the process, another tip I give is just to stop. I don't think enough people do non-doing and non-doing allows someone to slow their mind down a little bit and even better non-doing coupled with something that is fun or something that brings joy creates a higher self in the present and taking then that higher self in the present to go back into what you're doing usually lends itself to pick back up in a better place or above that baseline to get to the next level. That's so interesting. I think that's the first time I've heard that term used before, non-doing. Oh, non-doing is uh, a Justin Keller, <laughs> a Justin <laughs> Keller uh, word or word, hyphened word. Yeah. Non-doing gets you present because so many people are like, you know, hamster on a wheel of autopilot. And so if you can stop doing, you become present. And if you become present, you're with yourself and then you can become conscious. And if you can be conscious, doing something positive makes you feel good. That's like a bliss conscious or a moment of joy. And then taking that feeling and going back to doing with a positive flow. It's like people go down this rabbit hole of like forcing things. When we put gas in our cars, we charge our phones, everything else gets charged human brains also need a pause of non-doing i think i would agree with you sometimes it's good to just slow down and take a minute yeah what's the rush right yeah i did want to ask you too what is something that your clients often say after finishing a set of sessions with you like completing a group of sessions or just at the end of each one? I think my answer varies oh. a little bit. Both. Okay. Oh. Um, I don't know why, and I'm going to push the imposter syndrome that just tried to creep into my brain right now. I have people at the end of my sessions usually saying thank you. And 
frankly, I think like if it was really drilled down to what he, she, they, what this person is thanking me for is just listening and try my best to understand, but ensuring that I hear you. Because the work is done by my coachee and my clients. I help steer. I can help make suggestions. I have some mindset shift beliefs. I have a framework. But the work really should be thank yourself. Um, so there's this gratitude exchange at the end of my sessions, which is common and makes me feel good because I am helping somebody. Um, and then at the end, I would say I had two different people tell me they were writing down the words, no rules, only my rules. And I realized I say that in discovery calls or the first sessions. And to get someone to graduate or to build the next goal or what's the next step at the end of, I, I do eight sessions as a typical package with myself for one-on-one -on -one coaching. But at the end, if someone can say, I have a guide and I feel good to unleash myself in a no rules, only my rules way and give it my best shot. That is a common thread that makes me feel like I did what I was hired to do. I love that. And I, I feel too like that thank you that you get from your clients. I know from having been coached by you myself, that expertise that you have and having been an entrepreneur yourself and steering and mentoring is invaluable. Yeah. I mean, thank you for pointing that out. Um. I think like the science around gratitude is very powerful and I'm happy that I unlocked someone to be able to say thank you to myself, but also unblock somebody to be able to give gratitude. Something to do with some of my people I work with is there's a point where when that individual is kind of getting into the zone and feeling good, it's common that the individual will point out to me something that they're grateful for that has nothing to do with anything we've ever talked about in coaching. And that's just the ability that they're very present and they're very like strong flow to express gratitude. And I like to tell people at that point, maybe start journaling on that, reflecting on it. Cause the more gratitude you give, I think the more things will come back to you that you're going to be giving gratitude towards so powerful right the energy yeah. that resonates when we are yeah. appreciative and we express it it's a very powerful moment of being present also thank you thank you justin so much for coming and sharing with us today oh, you're um, welcome we're so glad to have you here but hopefully we can have you back again soon that would be cool you're Thank the orchestrator, you. the mastermind of the podcast. I'm just the lucky individual that gets to sit here and talk into a mic with you. Oh, well, definitely having the sessions with you helped. And I'm oh. so grateful for that. Thank you. I know you are too, because I see you <laughs> on things doing it. And it's powerful. So tell yourself thank you <laughs> yeah thank you thank thank self thank you self <laughs> i hope it right but and you too right i almost forgot i wanted to ask you a little bit about a book you had mentioned around coaching was this oh yeah it's a it's a <laughs> it's a writer and a uh an interesting fellow named seth godden a lot of my philosophical thought is very like Eastern world leaning. And I try to 
balance it with like corporate Western modern thought also. So I'll sometimes like read a Chopra book and then read a executive leadership book or something. And on this side, I have an author, Seth Godin, and I have two of his books and I reread them often to give myself introspection. First one is The Dip. The Dip, if you're starting your own business, I would say go get it. It's like 50 pages. It's just like no one to stick it out or no one to jump off the cliff. It's great. Did you, is nope. it, did you say 15 pages or 50 pages? 50, five, zero. It's short. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But the book I know that uh, you're asking me about is called The Purple Cow. And I try to be a purple cow. And the analogy is you're driving along the side of the road in the middle of the country and you see a cow and you say, oh, a cow. And then you keep driving, you see a bunch of cows and you're like, oh, a bunch of cows, it's pretty boring. And look how quickly you went from like a cow to like a oh, bunch of cows. But then what if you saw a purple cow? Why is that cow extraordinarily uniquely different from all the other ones? Moral of the story is if you're in a field that's crowded and other people doing something similar to you, stand out, go after the fringes, be extraordinary. If you're safe or pretty good, you're not going to stand out. And that, in essence, is the purple cow. Beautiful. Be extraordinary. Yeah. I'm going to remember that. Yeah, it's cool. It's short also. I think I think that's a good um, nugget for everyone to remember that it's okay to be yourself and be extraordinary. Yeah. I had a, someone tell me a parable about there's one that people say with like a horse with wings and the horse never flew because he was he or she or they were jealous about what the other horses would think. And it's like, don't be safe. Trust yourself. Be different. Be a purple cow. Oh, you're going to be a great dad, Justin. <laughs> I'm so excited for so. you guys. <laughs> I'll be a great dad according to myself, I think. So thank you. I know. I'm, and th that might have sounded random to anyone listening to this. No, before, no, no. It's quite beautiful. Why for expecting yeah. in May? So, can't oh, wait. Yeah, there's no. Go on my website. I am very forthcoming about who I am. Nothing to hide. <laughs> I want people to always know that I am not giving some spiel. This is who I am and really the framework that I live by and teach. I love that. That's one of my favorite things about you. Unique and authentic. Mm -hmm. Shapes who we are. Thank you, Justin. You're very welcome. Thank you. If someone's watching this podcast or if there are people watching this podcast and they're thinking, I'm ready to start my own business, but I'm not there in terms of a confidence where I'm not sure where to begin and they want to reach out to you for life coaching services to take that journey with them or start and grow their business successfully. How would they connect with you? I have a website that is coachjustinkeller.com. So C-O-A-C-H-J-U-S-T-I-N-K-E-L-L-E-R.com. Gives a pretty good synopsis on who I am, what I do and how to reach me. But I would also ask one question. If you are or aren't ready to start your business, says who? I love that. For people to take a leap of faith yeah. on themselves. If owning your own business and starting your own thing was easy, everyone would do it. Nice words. Thank you, Justin. And I will leave Justin's information in the link below thank, thank you. you justin for joining us today and thank you guys for watching we will see you in the next video thank you Bye, everyone guys.